Hello everybody, how's it going? Today we are going to be changing a oil filter adapter o-ring. Uh, Jeep Cherokees, they, uh, well I should start by saying a lot of the 4.0s in, in Wranglers, it's just a, an oil filter right to the engine block and uh, there's not a whole lot of leaks going on there. It just tends to work. Um, Cherokees have this real fancy thing that comes out of the block, turns 90 degrees, and then puts the oil filter pointing straight backwards. And they do that because there isn't enough room between the engine block and the unibody rail without turning the oil filter 90 degrees to fit a large enough oil filter on there, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, that 90 degree turny elbow thing, oil filter adapter, it uh, they leak. They definitely leak. I'm idling in my driveway, letting the Jeep warm up to full operating temperature. We're almost there. The reason is the bolt that they use from the factory to secure the oil filter adapter to the engine block, uh, Chrysler used red Loctite on it, and it is tight. It's not a, it's not a good area to torch. There's a lot of oil residue from it. It's been leaking for years, and I um, it, it's kind of hard to isolate. You know, I thought I thought that maybe it was just my rear main seal and oil pan gasket that was leaking for a while. And then last April, right before the Moab trip, um, I changed my rear main seal and oil pan gasket in this Jeep, and my oil leak looks about the same. And I'm, I'm quite certain it's just the oil filter adapter. My 93 Cherokee years ago had the same problem, and I don't remember ever fixing it. I have no idea. But anyway, so we have to uh, we'll let this thing warm up so that that red Loctite is as loose as possible. And then uh, there's a couple little tricks for, for uh, breaking that bolt loose because a, uh, a wrench doesn't fit on it. There isn't enough room uh, between the unibody rail and that bolt. I just pulled into the garage and you can see the, the overall dampness um, all throughout here. And that, uh, that giant uh, dent in the oil pan there that is from this uh, third link here this time joint it it did contact a little bit and then in Utah I ended up just bashing it in with a hammer so it looks real bad but it, it doesn't touch anymore but anyway this is what we're going to be going after today you can see that drip coming off the oil filter right now that's not the oil filter leaking uh, that is just residual uh, you can see that that aluminum silvery gray thing that comes out of the block and then turns 90 degrees to the filter that's the oil filter adapter and that thing leaks at the block it leaks at the end it leaks at everywhere and then when you're driving the wind just comes in here and blows all that oil back uh, last time i washed the jeep i stuck the the spray wand in here and blasted the starter and all that so it looks kind of clean but if you don't stay on top of it it just everything just gets drenched and um, this piece of cardboard here on the ground this is a fresh piece of cardboard that i put down right when i pulled in and it's it's actively dripping right now and uh, I, you know it's not dramatic it's not a whole lot but you can imagine that uh, when you're driving for hours and hours and hours all this oil adds up and blows down the whole back of the jeep and uh, i like to joke that it it's uh you know keeps it rust free and that it does but it is a pain and it makes you very self-conscious when you pull into nice driveways so all right let me show you some tricks while the engine's nice and hot and we'll start taking this thing apart so here's the trick right here it's a t60 torx that secures the oil filter adapter to the block and i have long since lost this um the socket here that holds these these things are kind of kind of glued in or, or something what you want to do is get a T60 um, bit and then uh, just take a punch or a screwdriver or something and hammer the bit out, the actual uh, Torx bit. And that's what I've done here. This is, a, like I said, a T60 and uh, I'll show you um, why. All right, so we're looking straight down on the distributor and right underneath it, you can see that red oil filter. Now bear with me here. It's a, it's a tight squeeze. So here's that, that T60. That is going to go right there. So it's in the Torx bit. Now the, the thing is, when you have the socket part on there and then you try to put a breaker bar or a wrench on it, there simply isn't enough room between the unibody rail right there and the Torx bit. 
Um, but in, uh, I don't know if they're different sizes, probably not, but a, a 12 millimeter metric wrench fits perfectly on that bit. And that's why we hammered it out of the socket. So I'm going to grab my 12 millimeter wrench, and stick it on there and see if we can break it loose. But first I need to take off the oil filter. I just got the oil filter off of there. And one thing I'll point out is you do not have to drain your oil uh, out of your pan to do this. It, you, you are going to lose some. It's just dripping out of the the block there. Um, it'll stop here eventually. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot in the pan. It's, I don't know, I don't. I've, I have no idea how much you're going to lose, but it's not going to be um, anything detrimental. You know, maybe like a eighth of a cup or something. So uh, you will want to check it afterwards and just top it off. Here's that 12 millimeter box wrench. Let me show you how perfect this is. It just fits right over that. If I can get it. <laughs> it's a long ways down. Come on. There it is. Okay. Really good fit. Um, now, there's not a chance we're going to be able to turn this with just that little wrench. Uh, so we're going to have to stick something on there. I guess if I flip that the other way, like this, it should be more up and down. There we go. Stay. Okay. So now, um, anything we got, another wrench we can put on this to add leverage or a, a piece of pipe or something, and I think I, I have a piece of pipe um, that might just happen to work. So uh, let's give that a shot. All right, I got this big old 20 inch piece of square tube on there. <laughs> I'm gonna try to just do this with my right hand. That's some random thing that I have laying around. Let's see what happens here. All right, I might need two hands. Uh, one thing I'll point out is you should connect, disconnect your battery, the negative cable. Um, if you're working with metal right around it and then also your starter wires are right down there and if you drop a wrench it can arc out and I think I recall doing that once um, uh, you may note that I have not disconnected my battery but I'll be okay but uh, just keep that in mind if you don't like spark showers you may want to disconnect okay I need two hands well that piece of square tube didn't work so I had this jack handle uh, laying around that fit the, the end of the wrench pretty good and I uh, was pulling on it so hard, I, I bent my wrench. I'm right there at the end. You can kind of see it. So uh, anyway, I didn't get the didn't get that bolt to budge um, at all, and I, I uh, ran out of room in the engine bay um, for leverage. So maybe I can crawl underneath and do it. But um, yeah, not good. So obviously it's not hot enough. That Loctite is still holding real good and uh, may have to torch even though the whole area is saturated with oil. New strategy. So I uh, took a 13 millimeter socket here and uh, that is a lot smaller than how these things come or excuse me a 12 millimeter socket and then this T60 bit will slip right in there and then I have a, a 3 8 drive uh, give me a second here I need both hands a 3 8 drive uh, breaker bar. This is just a, uh, I don't know, foot long or so. My thing fell out there, but you get the idea. Even uh, with the smaller socket, the breaker bar, and the bit, it's just about the same size as um, this piece would have been alone. Uh, so maybe I have enough room, and my plan now is to come from the underside and see if I can break that loose. Nope, that didn't work either. There's just not enough room between the unibody rail and that socket. Can't get the breaker bar in. Pain in the rear. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to go back to the the uh, little 12 millimeter wrench uh, with the breaker bar. I might bend it in half, but that's the only way I see uh, that I'm gonna be able to get that out. I hardly believe it, but I put this I put this big old thing on that little wrench and I pulled as hard as I could, and I thought the wrench was gonna snap or something. I was sliding all over the floor, and it goes, pow! And I saw the bolt move. So, <laughs> winning. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, I think uh, breaking it loose from the bottom is uh, probably easier. But uh, once you get it loose, you definitely want to go up on top because it's uh, continuing to leak oil just a little bit, which isn't too surprising. I'll tell you what, though, this thing is just not easy to get at. Maybe it'll, it'll pin into the engine mount there. And this, uh, this T60 Torx, even though it's loose, it's still tight. It has that, that Loctite goo on there. And you can see that whole cap right by my thumb spinning. This is kind of like a captured bolt, so it won't actually come out of the oil filter adapter. What we're doing is we're unscrewing it all the way through this thing um, where it threads into the block. So this thing is almost out of here. Just slowly, turn by turn, we're going to get it. All right, guys, I just got this thing out of there. And looks like I, I may have been wrong. I forget where I saw that. I thought it was on one of my old Jeeps where there were multiple O-rings. Must have been on the older style. I'm kind of down that shaft towards the base. And uh, I don't see any O-ring. I don't see any O-ring on this one at all. But there's obviously a big groove um, right here. So the O-ring's likely stuck on the block. I'll go, I'll go look for it. But uh, that is it. There's a good chance that um, if you are having a oil leak coming from your oil pan area it's probably this freaking thing this is where your oil filter seals up real nice on that that machine surface um, right to the, the rubber gasket here on the oil filter and then this side um, and then this side right here is where it it uh, mates up to the engine block and this threads in all right let me see if i can find what's left of the o-ring and see if it is in fact stuck to the engine block. So I, I couldn't even tell at first, but I wiped some of the grease off and was able to get my, my fingernail in here. There it is. It feels like a, a hard piece of plastic, but I think that is the remnants of a uh, an old O-ring. Just went up right there on that, on that uh, seal. Okay, so maybe the uh, Maybe the store is right. You do just get, just need one of these, and that would be great if that's the case. So I just wiped out this groove pretty good, and then I cleaned it on the block uh, with some paper towels. I didn't, I didn't do anything, um, anything too involved. Just make sure there wasn't any debris in there. Here's that nice clean gasket, brand new. Uh, look how, look how pliable and soft this is <laughs> compared to this one. It, it's rock hard. Rock hard plastic ring versus um, soft rubber o-ring. I don't, I assume that used to be like this, but after, what year is my Jeep? 98, and then now it's 2018, so 20 years, I'm sure this is the original one, 20 years after heating and cooling and all that kind of stuff, uh, turned rubber into plastic. Uh, all right, so I guess maybe I should coat this with oil or something, that's, that's typical. Typical practice, so I'll just I'll dip my finger in a little bit of that that oil. Uh, I just changed my oil less than like actually literally less than five miles ago. So <laughs> um, I'll take some of that clean oil and spread it around this O-ring, and then reassemble the same way it came apart. So if you're uh, if you've fixed your rear main seal and your oil pan gasket, and you still have a bad leak. Or if you haven't fixed your oil pan gasket and rear main seal, you might want to check this because this could be your leak. And if that's the case, looks like this could be a $2 fix to your to your leak. Um, a real a real pain in the rear. Nope, not gonna lie there getting this thing off. Uh, but uh, money wise, $2. Uh, you can probably if you match this with a with the uh, a non-specific O-ring, just a some miscellaneous o-ring if you match the size could cost even less but uh, for two dollars for the actual part from felpro felpro 70301 oil adapter o-ring it um, that could be your solution all right guys i'm going to put this back together fire up the jeep and we'll see if it's still leaking or if this actually fixed it 
I just tried for probably 10 minutes to get this thing started by hand. I just couldn't do it. Um, and I couldn't do it with an open wrench either. So what I have on here, I don't want to even take it out to show you, but anyway, it's a, a ratcheting wrench. You know, not a ratchet, but a ratcheting box wrench, box wrench excuse me. And uh, without this, so you have to take this finger here and hold in uh, inward pressure on the bolt while turning the wrench. And I just got it started. This thing's keyed. I'm right, let's see, where am I? Right there, there's a little tube that goes to your oil pressure sending unit and it goes in this um, spot. So you have to line that up. But without this ratcheting wrench and being able to hold pressure um, in here at the same time, uh, there's not a chance in chance in anywhere I would have gotten this thing uh, started. So that's a, a definitely a tip for you. I think you're going to need a ratcheting 12 millimeter wrench like this. Okay, so I just got that tightened back up. I, um, I tightened that T60 bolt probably to a torque spec of good and tight. Something like that. Uh, not tight enough to straighten my wrench. I, I, if I ever have to do this again, it, there's no need for it to be that, that tight. That was it's ridiculous. Uh, I have the oil filter on. Everything looks good. I wiped it down a little bit. I'm going to stick the camera that I'm recording with right now right underneath it, pointing straight up and turn the Jeep on and hopefully nothing leaks. And then I'm going to drive it around and I'll just keep an eye on it for the next several days to make sure that everything is looking good. And if that's the case, then great. The leak is probably fixed. All right, guys. Be sure to subscribe and hit the blue bell for notifications. We really appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And we'll see you in the next video.